Yay, yay! Star Wars is back! Kenobi is here! Eh? And you know the sad thing about it? That is pretty much the tone for episode one and two. What up YouTube, it's your boy Fatal J. Back like I left something and I'm glad you're here. Yes, I'm glad you're here. And right here is the episode one and two of Star Wars Obi Kenobi Disney Plus show. And I'm going to be harsh on it. This is the thing about me. Maybe I set my bar way too high. I let stuff pass because it was mediocre. Boba Fett was trash. Uh, Last Jedi was trash. I let these things go by, but I set my bar really high for Kenobi. I was like, okay, Hayden Christensen, Ewan McGregor, they are back. They are the standard. These are the legendary characters from the Star Wars show, from uh, Revenge of the Sith, the best lightsaber fight we ever seen. And I am going to tell you right now, I was let down hugely. I was very much so disappointed because everything moved absolutely slow. Now, I know what you're gonna say. I know what you're gonna say. Fatal J, they have to build up the story. You can build up the story in a very dope way. Yes, you can. You can build up a story without it being just total boring dialogue and us feeling so sad for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. Can you remember that? But before we get into that, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell. Because every time you hit that notification bell, it makes your boy Fader Jake feel oh so good and oh so swell. Also, this is what I want you to do. Right beside the like button, I want you to hit that super thanks button. Because when you hit that super thanks button, it does so much for my channel. I also shout you out in my next videos. It's absolutely great. It does great for my channel. I can get better equipment. Also, join that Ninja Patreon, my Patreon, and make sure to join the Fatal J membership. I will appreciate greatly because you two, they're absolutely trash themselves when it comes to the monetization. So please support me on that so I can bring you the pain, tell you the truth, because these other channels, they're not going to give you the truth about this Star Wars stuff, Marvel, DC, and all that type of stuff. They're not going to give you that because they are in the pockets of these companies. I'm not in the pockets of these companies. You, the viewer right here, support me. So please, thank you so much. Now let's get into episode one. And we're also going to be talking about episode two. Episode one, it starts off with us seeing a fight scene in the Jedi Temple. I never understand in this new Disney regime how all these Jedi somehow survived Order 66. I thought the whole purpose of Order 66 was all the Jedi were wiped out except pretty much Obi-Wan and Yoda. I mean, I know I was a handful of Jedi life left, but I seen like every time we look at these comic books and these, these video games and these movies, it's so many Jedi survive or 66. I just don't get it, man. And then you got the little kids, the little younglings running off. They escape. How did they escape? I thought they was going to set up the ultimate Anakin Skywalker move and show Anakin going in on younglings. I'm sorry. I wanted to see that. I thought that was going to be incredible if we saw Anakin go in there and murk everybody. If they would have did that and take that chance, I would have gave Disney the crown for going that far, but they didn't go there. After that, it hit 10 years later and we see Kenobi pretty much in a sad state working a, a, a nine to five job and my boy he just he, I, they do this to, they do this to these characters you notice that Obi-Wan Kenobi is going the same route as Luke did in Last Jedi where they just 
feel bad about themselves and they cowards and they're just running away from their destiny instead of being fighters in hope. See, in George Lucas Star Wars, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker was the only hope in the universe, you know? But these days, we look at Obi-Wan Kenobi and we look at last Jedi uh, Luke Skywalker, they're cowards, they're scaredy cats. And I thought the whole point of Star Wars was you have this one guy go against the whole empire. You have this one Jedi going against the whole empire and being the only hope for everybody out there. I guess we don't have that anymore. So we go through the episode. They're pretty much um, hunting down Jedis on Tatooine for some odd reason. They knew that it was a Jedi on Tatooine. And Reba, Reba the black chick, She's supposed to be uh, the one that's really hunting for Kenobi because she has some kind of vendetta against her, against him. Now, I'm feeling like Reva, she might be on down the line. I can see Disney dropping this ball right here. Well, Reva is going to be Mace Window daughter. Call me on that. Watch on episode 10. You're going to see, uh, or episode 6 because they keep these short, but... I'm, you're going to go back to this video and say, Fatal J, you was right. That's Mace Windu's daughter. But she got some kind of vendetta against uh, um, uh, Luke. I mean, against Obi-Wan Kenobi. And, and they alluded to that she's looking for Luke Skywalker too. Now, I want to tell you something about Reba. Reba is, her acting in this show is absolutely garbage to me. It, it just seems so amateurish. And it seems like... She's trying her best to give a great performance, but it seems like she's not giving her up to it. She's not projecting hard enough when it comes to making us believe she's this terrible villain. It's just, it, it just seems so amateurish. And I'm not trying to downgrade her. Look, I'm not against, because I know what the people say, they're going to say in the comments. Oh, Fatal J, you're not giving her a chance because she's a black woman. Look, I'm a black guy, but you have dope black actors, and you have black actors that are amateurs, amateurs and absolute garbage. And I have to say, she doesn't feel right for this role. And when I watch her act, it took me out a lot on this show. It took me out a lot on these two episodes because it just, I don't know, it just felt... It didn't felt like she was projecting as a good villain. But basically, we go through that episode of episode one where um, we see young Luke. We see Leia and the focus of Leia. I don't, I don't understand why Leia is the, the focus on this show. But you have one point where Leia, she keeps running away from her mother and father. And... At one point, she runs away. She ran away two times. The second time, she was running away and the villains was trying to kidnap her. I under, don't understand for the life of me. She has these small, short, tiny legs and these grown-up aliens could not catch her. I could not get that. I couldn't understand that for the life of me. And she was the main focus. She got kidnapped because Reba is trying to draw out Obi-Wan Kenobi. How she knows about Obi-Wan Kenobi on Tatooine. To me, I still don't know, but it drawn him out, and that goes on to episode two. Right at the end of episode one, you have Kenobi. Kenobi is getting his mojo back as a Jedi because he, he's pretty much a coward. Um, Leia's father wants Kenobi to go get Leia, but he refuses. It's the same stuff from the last Jedi where. Uh, uh, the main hero from George Lucas' universe is a coward. So we get into episode two. Episode two, Kenobi eventually finds her. And to me, that episode two, it still was lackluster because pretty much the whole episode, he's trying to track down Leia. He finds Leia. He uses a little bit of uh, uh, Jedi powers. Now, the only thing that I liked about this episode is that you had F um, Obi-Wan Kenobi trying his best not to use his force powers. I really liked that concept, but they didn't deliver it good enough. But he eventually, eventually gets Leia back. We never... What? This is what I don't understand. Reva? Reva kills the Inquisitor. Of course, this is going to be spoilers because I've been giving you spoilers throughout the whole show. But she kills the Inquisitor for why I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. And they escape. And then we get the classic Darth Vader 
in the back of the tank. I, this show here, man, is just it, it, it's, it's really a disappointment. And maybe it's my fault. Maybe I set the bar way too high. I probably set it too high. But when you it comes to this Disney Plus, Star Wars, Lucasfilm regime, they just haven't delivered, man. They the only thing that they really delivered was Mandalorian and Rogue One. Force Awakens, Last Jedi, and Rise of Skywalker, excuse me, Rise of Papatine is absolutely garbage trash. And hopefully it gets better. But Disney Plus, they do have a pattern. And the pattern is this. They usually get the first episode right and they get the last episode right. But if it starts off with the first episode being garbage, then it's going to be consistent all the way to the end. Maybe the Darth Vader and Obi-Wan Kenobi fight will take it to another level. I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. You guys let me know in the comments. Is Fatal J just a plain hater? Did you think this show was absolutely dope? Or do you think like Fatal J in this episode, episode one and two was absolutely trash? And let me know in the comments if you continue, you want me to continue bombing on this show and letting you know if it's trash. Look. I'm a Star Wars fan to the core. I want to see Star Wars do better, but it's not doing better. It's not doing better. The stories are not good, man. This is just a cash cow to get Disney stock back up because Disney is doing bad. You guys let me know what you think. Uh, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell. Because when you hit that notification bell, it makes your boy Fatal J feel oh so good and oh so swell. And I'm out of here. Ninja Danny.